everyone, Maya here from My Storybook and welcome back to today's interactive read aloud. I am so excited that you are here again to join us for My Storybook special read aloud event celebrating Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month this May, where every weekday this month I will be sharing a new interactive read aloud featuring a children's book with Asian characters or a book that was created by Asian illustrators or authors. There are so many amazing books to share, my friends, and if you are curious about what we have already read or what we will be reading next, you can check out the full Read Aloud lineup on my blog. There is a link in the description down below so you can see the full list of books we will be sharing. Otherwise, just stay tuned here on YouTube to see all the reading adventures coming up this month. For today, though, we have a very sweet Read Aloud called Sakura's Cherry Blossoms about a young Japanese girl who lives in Japan, but then has to move to America. However, when she moves, she has to leave her grandma behind. Her grandmother can't come with her. So not only is she leaving a special place, her home, she's also leaving someone she loves behind. And a lot of times my friends' families have to do this when they move to a different country. Sometimes not all of their family members can come with them. And it is sad, right? Leaving your home and people you love. It's exciting to start a new place and a new home and a new adventure somewhere else, but also sad to leave those things that you left behind. So we're going to read about Sakura and her experience moving to America. And something special about this book is that this book is actually written in a series of Japanese poems called Tonka poems. So a Tonka poem is a traditional Japanese poem with five lines and 31 syllables. Syllables, remember, are the sounds that you hear words make. You can clap out syllables like Sakura has three syllables, three parts. As you read this story, it's going to be made up of these Tonka poems that all have five lines and the five lines have 31 syllables. And usually the first three lines of the poem follow the same pattern as a haiku. So haiku is another special type of Japanese poem that has five syllables, seven syllables, that's five syllables, seven syllables, and then five syllables on the third line. But then, since a Tonka poem has five lines, the next two lines in a Tonka poem each have seven syllables. So if you notice, if, as you're reading, you can try to count along with the syllables or just appreciate the rhythm of the words and the rhythm of the story as we read this story written in special Tonka poems. Okay? All right, well, I think we're ready to begin. Double thumbs up if you're ready to get started. Let's check it out. The title of today's interactive read aloud is Sakura's Cherry Blossoms, written by Robert Paul Weston and illustrated by Misa Sabori. So Misa Sabori is the illustrator, which means what was her job in the book? She draws all the pictures and the author is Robert Paul Weston and authors do what part of the story? <laughs> Writes all the words. Now this book was written by Tundra Books, so very special thanks to Tundra Books for sharing this story with us and letting us share this reading adventure together. Now if I take a look at the cover here, Sakura's Cherry Blossoms, what do you notice on the cover? I notice little girl and that must be her grandma. Cherry Blossoms, my friends, are these very beautiful pink flowers. They look like little pink flowers in the trees and guess what? They smell really good too. Have you ever seen cherry blossoms or smelled them before? What do you think about them? If you haven't seen them or smelt them, they are beautiful, my friends, and you'll see a little bit more of them in this story. So actually, Sakura actually means cherry blossom in Japanese. So that's kind of nice that her name means cherry blossom. All right, well, I think we're ready to get started. So let's begin. So here's our title page. As the title of our book, Sakura's Cherry Blossom, our author and our illustrator and our publisher, Tundra Books. And here I see a beautiful cherry blossom flower and look at this beautiful scene on the very first page. What do you see? Lots of Sakura blossoms, cherry blossoms, and Sakura and her grandma. Sakura loves spring, her favorite time of year. This made perfect sense. Her name means cherry blossom, trees that only bloom in spring. Oh, so spring's her favorite season, and her name is a flower that only blooms in spring. My friends, do you know what your name means? What does it mean? <laughs> Usually all names mean something. My name is Maya and it can mean water in Sanskrit. Well, if you don't know what your name means, you should look it up or ask your family. And my friends, what's your favorite season? Oh, that's a good one. I like summer. 
Spring's also really pretty though. More than anything, she loves sitting underneath the tall cherry tree, side by side with Oba-chan, whose voice was warm like sunshine. So Oba-chan, so I should say grandmother in Japanese. Together they sat in the shade of pink petals, watching them flutter. They ate bento box lunches. They told each other stories. So remember, these words are written in a Tonka poem. So five lines, one, two, three, four, five, with 31 syllables. And let's look at their lunch. A bento box is the type of way they eat lunch. So they have this box and they put different foods in it. What do you see inside their bento box lunch? Looks like this might be fish, maybe like some sushi here, like in these little oh, rice balls over here, which are usually stuffed with meat or something's inside this rice. Mmm, what a nice picnic. I've watched this tree grow all my life, said Oba-chan. This is how I learned. Seeing those blossoms in bloom is always finest with friends. Oh, so it's always best to see nature and beautiful things with friends. Do you agree? That's something beautiful that you like to see with your friends. Which one do you think is Oba-chan as a little girl? Sakura's father would soon begin a new job in America. They would fly across the sea where a new life awaited. High up in the plane, it seemed like a miracle racing through the clouds. So fluffy and pale like rice scooped fresh from Obachan's pot. So the clouds are fluffy like rice? Oh, my friends, how would you describe the clouds? The clouds are fluffy like... That's a good one. Maybe like cotton candy. So here she is looking down. She's so amazed that you can fly through the sky. Their new house loomed up on a street with soaring trees peppering the ground with shadows and light, but none had any cherry blossoms. Luke, a quiet boy, lived next door gazing at night through a telescope. Sakura wanted to say hello, but she was too shy. So here she is. So another little boy up there, but a little shy. I wonder, do you think they'll become friends? Maybe. Looks like school, right? I see some school buses. Sakura's new school was a big, boisterous place full of noise, energy, where each word was new. They nipped and snapped on her tongue like a tang of pickled plums. Each word was new. So Sakura used to live in Japan, so she speaks Japanese. But if you go to America, what language do they speak in school? English. So imagine that, my friends. What do you think school is going to be like if you go to a new school where you understand nothing? How might you feel? Nervous? Probably a little bit scared because you don't really understand what's going on. So each word sounds weird on her tongue, right? If you're not used to speaking a new language, the words can feel strange on your tongue, like pickled plums. Neko became cat. So Neko must be Japanese for cat. Sora had become the sky. So Sora, Japanese for sky. And Kutsu was a shoe. So she's learning all these English words for the Japanese words she knew. Sakura tried very hard, but she often made mistakes. She missed Oba-chan. She missed the cherry blossoms, their soft and sweet scent. She missed stories and picnics and the whispers of petal. I would miss a lot of things too, right? If I had to move far away from home. Oh, wait a minute. What is going on here? Who is this? Luke, the neighbor. And it looks like, hey, they're hanging out. One day, Luke saw her sad and still on the front steps. When I'm down, he said, I find it helps to look up. If you want, I could show you. <gasps> so when I'm down, when I'm feeling sad, I feel it helps to look up. And what does he look up at? The moon, stars. That's some great advice, my friends. When you're feeling down, when you feel sad, what makes you feel better? Those sound like great ideas. Sakura saw stars, sprinkles of light, and the moon, pearl gray and shining. Its craters were like wide eyes watching the whole world at once. Wow. There's a chance, said Luke. One of those stars has gone dark, but we still see it because its last rays of light have not yet reached us on Earth. <gasps> oh, that is true. My friends, the light that we see from stars is light from a long time ago. So we don't see the light right away. It takes a long time for the light to travel to us. So by the time we actually see the star, the star could actually be gone. Mm, space is fascinating. Flowers are like stars, said Sakura. They blossom, they sparkle, and then they fade. So we treasure them because one day they vanish. So she's thinking the stars remind her of the cherry blossoms. Oh, so beautiful. Luke stood very still. He had never thought of this. I suppose, he said. 
when you look up all the time, there are many things you miss. Oh, so he's like, well, I guess if you look up too much, though, you might miss what's right there in front of you, right? So here they are looking up at the sky. Mm. So it's always important to notice everything around you, appreciate everything around you, up and down and right in front. Sakura and Luke. Soon they became friends who played, laughed, and went exploring. Sakura, for the first time, had begun to feel at home. Friends can always make you feel at home, right? Between friends, she found her words were limber and quick with no taste at all. So she was talking to a friend. She could speak easily, right? Practice her English. She didn't feel like it was strange. They flipped and curled from her mouth as effortlessly as breath. So when you talk to a friend, it's so easy to talk to friends. My friends, do you have a friend that you can just talk forever with? It's so easy to talk to them. Who is it? What a special friend. When the winter came, Sakura's mother told her, we have to go back. Not for long, but we must go. Obachan is very ill. <gasps> oh no, so Obachan, her grandmother, is sick and they must go. <gasps> How does Sakura feel when she hears this news? <laughs> very sad, right? And I noticed the illustration, right? It's it's just her alone in this room. Makes me feel like really empty and lonely. So now they're back in Japan. Sakura's hometown seemed much smaller than before. In the cold, bright sun, even the tall cherry tree was shivering and leafless. So now that it's winter time, it looks a lot different, right? There's no more cherry blossoms. And how does this picture make you feel? Makes you feel sadness, right? Everything, there's no more beautiful flowers. The colors are darker, not as bright. It's empty. It's kind of like the sadness you must feel because Obachan is ill. Mother had been right. Obachan was very sick, dozing in her bed, sleeping in her bed. But hearing Sakura's voice, she awoke, her eyes dancing. <gasps> Seeing Sakura makes her feel so much happier. My little blossom, she cried. Seeing you again, it makes me so happy. It is all that I wanted. Only this and nothing more. So all she wanted was to see Sakura. This time on the plane, Sakura did not marvel at the cotton clouds. She slept dreaming of a sky churning with every season. So this time on the way home, she's sleeping and she's imagining all these different seasons. And what do you think happened to Obachan? I don't know, I hope she's okay, but maybe she passed away and she's remembering all the seasons, seasons of life, how life so it's changing, moving on the cycle of life. Luke was excited seeing Sakura again, but when he asked her to go exploring with him, she said, no, she was too sad. What do you notice about this picture? Yeah, it makes it seem like Sakura's on a whole nother planet, right? Here's Luke on the moon. Is he really on the moon? No, but this shows us how far apart they are. Sakura is so sad. It's like she's on a different planet. She's all alone over here. She was worried too. Might she forget Obachan? Her face? Her laughter? With no cherry trees nearby, what was there to remind her? Don't worry, said Luke. I have a surprise for you. Just wait until spring. What do you think the surprise is? <laughs> Sakura did. She waited. The days grew warmer. And then. Oh, and then. But wait a minute, my friends. So she's worried she's going to forget about Obachan because Obachan is no longer there. Have you ever had, my friends, a family member who passed away? How do you remember them? Yeah. One way to remember is to talk about them with other family members who remember them, share stories, or just remember them in your hearts. And if you love them in your heart, they'll always be there with you. Surprise, and it's springtime, it's getting warmer. Let's see what it is. What happens in springtime here where they live? The entire city bursts to life, flowers blooming on every corner. By the river, both its shores blazed bright with cherry blossoms. Right? This is Sakura's first spring here. She moved to America after spring, so she never got to see what spring looked like. But in America, look at all those cherry blossoms. Huge crowds of people had gathered to admire them. There were pink balloons, music, picnics, a parade, and even a marching band. So in some places in America, there are cherry blossoms, and they have a cherry blossom festival to celebrate these beautiful flowers. And what are the beautiful flowers going to remind Sakura of? Her oba channel. Sakura and Luke found a quiet place to sit with their families. They ate lunch and told stories. They chatted, they played, they laughed. 
Watching cherry blossoms bloom is always finest with friends. And who told her that? Oh, but John. So here with Luke under the cherry blossoms, she can remember her grandma, her Obachan, and appreciate nature, have fun with her friends, while also keeping Obachan special in her heart, right? The end. And look, they're having a picnic. Their families are meeting. And what are they having at this picnic? <coughs> yeah, I see some bread, some watermelon sandwiches. Food's a little different, right, than her picnic with Obachan before. They had some more Japanese food then. Here it looks more like American food, sandwiches, watermelon, slices. Yeah, well, if you move different places, have different foods and traditions, but it's always fun when you can blend them together and enjoy the things where you are right in the moment too, right? The end. Here it tells us a little bit more about this Tonka poems that I shared with you how this book was written with those five lined poems with 31 syllables. What a sweet story, my friends, of friendship, of family, of love, of home, moving to different places, remembering what you left behind and remembering those who you left behind, but also keeping them special in your hearts while also learning to accept new places, new friends, and new adventures in your life, right? What was something you really liked about this story? Yeah, I love the beautiful cherry blossoms. I liked how Sakura made a new friend, Luke, who helped her also appreciate her grandma with the cherry blossoms. I really thought the cherry blossoms were beautiful. I liked how Sakura really loved her family and her Obachan and also was brave to go to a new school, try these new words and make new friends. She is a very brave little girl to be able to start a whole new life like this and still find things to love and enjoy about it, right? My friends, if you're interested in some book themed crafts, you can always check out my blog, my storybook link down below to find some other read alouds and crafts to go along with them. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this reading adventure, please subscribe to my storybook YouTube channel by clicking on that subscribe button and giving this video a thumbs up. That way I know which videos you are enjoying and what stories to share more of. And as always, my friends, I am very happy that you are joining me this Asian American Pacific Islander Month to share all these Asian children's stories. So please be sure to stay tuned for our next Read Aloud adventure coming very soon. Until then, my friends, please reach out to me on all my social media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, blog, all those social media links can be found there down below. Share with me any of your own reading adventures or stories. Maybe you have stories about you moving, about your favorite flowers, favorite memories, friends. I love hearing from all of you. Otherwise, it is time for this read aloud to come to an end. So I hope I see you at our next reading adventure. But until then, my friends, happy reading.